Hello again. This time I'm going to talk about domain sampling theory. So domain sampling theory is a key essential component of classical test theory. It's another way to think about populations and samples. Now a domain is theoretically infinite and it is the possible population or universe of all possible items, all possible questions and variants related to a single concept or trait. And a test is merely a sampling of those potential items. Ideally, your test that you measure will be a representative sample of the domain. Now, how I tend to think about this, and that's actually why I produce study guides for my classes, is because I use the study guide as my sampling frame to identify all the possible areas that could be tested upon. And usually, with rare exception, unless I think something is super duper important and I really want you to know it, so I've told you about it, um, in general, I randomly select from those study guide topics and develop a question or two based on that. That's how I do it, because I want the test to be representative on average. All right. So domain sampling theory. The idea here is that a person's true score would be obtainable by having them respond to all the items in the universe of questions, all of them. Um, however, we only see a very small subset of those sample items on a test because it's impossible to test all of them. And so ideally, and here's one way to think about reliability, is the proportion of variance that is explained in the universe of possible test questions. How much of your variance is explainable by your test? Ideally, you want to match it up really well or um, something along those lines. So, um, the key idea that I'm trying to get at here is that a universe is made of a path of an infinitely large number of questions. And as tests get longer, they are better representative of the domain for each individual version. Now, obviously there are trade-offs here, but longer tests mean higher reliability in theory. Now you do have trade-offs like t fatigue and exhaustion. And so at some point there is, there's definitely a law of diminishing returns here. But in theory, longer tests have higher reliability because the errors can cancel out. There are more opportunities to have errors in both directions. And so one test question, it, you if you get unlucky or have an error that downweights that, uh, hopefully there's another test question in there somewhere that upweights so that they cancel out. So for us to like best get at all the test questions, uh, and to get a representative test, in theory, we could take random samples from the population of test questions, and then we'd have a distribution of test questions that we could then give to people. And those sample scores, on average, would represent the population. So this is the whole idea be behind randomly sampling. So if you randomly sample questions from the universe of questions, then your test on average is representative. Kind of nice. Now, in reality, test development takes a long time, and so people don't do this. Um, but yeah. So that is it for my little, little comment on domain sampling theory. There's more detail in the book, um, but I'll see you later. Bye.